Welcome back, everybody, to the Victory Road World Cup stream covering week one of the qualifiers. My name is Gabby Snyder, and I'm once again joined by my friend uh, Costa here uh, to bring you to the end of today's stream. We have one more match remaining, and it's going to be a ton of fun. Costa, are you ready for this? Uh, I mean, I'd say I'm born ready, but I'm definitely, definitely ready, uh, regardless, because I think this is going to be such an exciting battle uh, between two South American countries right now, Ecuador versus Argentina, as well as uh, great countries with VGC, absolutely phenomenal players. We're going to go ahead and check out what the current status is between Argentina and Ecuador, where they are both at 1-1, currently with a draw, and they'll be seeking to try to get that advantage over each other. Yeah, before we jump into the match we'll be covering, I got to give a shout out to Kelvin because I see a Kingdra and a Pelipper <laughs> on his team, and I just, I appreciate that. I, that is beautiful. Uh, yeah. But for today's beautiful match, we're going to be uh, featuring Paul Ruiz, the former world champion from Ecuador versus Ezequiel Bustamán. Uh, and I apologize for the name pronunciation. I'm going to be doing my best. But given that Argentina currently, or given that these teams are currently tied, you know, this team, this game is going to be really important in setting the mm -hmm. momentum as, you know, Argentina and Ecuador look to close out the week. Oh, exactly. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what both of these great players will be bringing right now to our screens as we're going to go ahead, cut to player profiles as we are going to be seeing uh, none other than Paul Ruiz, uh, the uh, previous uh, world champion of VGC, rocking with the Xerneas, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Volcarona, Amundus, and the Urshifu Rapid Strike. Gabby, that we're starting to see that core pop up everywhere with the fire, water, grass in between Incineroar, Rilla, and Urshi. We are, and it's a really interesting combination, uh, given how uh, Rillaboom and Incineroar, when played with the Urshifu, are the defensive side of that Firewater Grass Core. And then you have the Urshifu uh, Rapid Strike form just doing its best to hit, land all those critical hits. You know, Surging Strikes is incredibly powerful. Uh, Paul also giving himself access to Amoongus and Xerneas, which, if you're a longtime VG, Player, you should at least recognize this combo mm -hmm. um, to set up Geomancy and really let the Xerneas run through teams. Uh, a curious adaptation from Series 10 in particular has been the Volcarona to act as the Rage Powder user in mm -hmm. that core. Uh, so I think it's going to depend on what Paul is facing against on Ethe's side of the field uh, to determine which mode of this Xerneas support he decides to bring. And uh, talking about FA, we're going to go over to their player profile now as well, where they are going to be rocking the Eveltal, Incineroar, Landorus Incarnate, that Araquanid, Amundus, and oh, a Stuck Attacker, which a Xerneas really does not want to see against it right now. This is kind of a uh, X versus Y battle, if you will, <laughs> with the Ooh. Eveltal on FA side of the field. Nice uh, and. And like you mentioned, not only is the stack attacker going to have the type advantage against Xerneas, uh, I think Ethe's team is a bit more adapted to running Trick Room with the Araquanid and the Amoongus as the other shoutouts next to that stack attacker. Uh, mm -hmm. Going up against a Xerneas team, uh, especially a Xerneas team that is supported by traditionally faster Pokemon like the Rillaboom and that Incineroar, um, mm -hmm. I think you do rely on Trick Room. Uh, the big questions for uh, both these trainers to consider as we go into game one, as we get this game started, uh, I think is how how do I stop my Pokemon from being put to sleep? Because obviously, mm -hmm. Lucas is always a great Trick Room counter. Uh, and uh, two, how do I find time to stall the Trick Room turns if you're Paul? Um, yeah. I do like how we're seeing what appears to be a Xerneas lead from Paul, but uh, knowing how comfortable he is on this world stage, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to switch things up immediately to respond to whatever ethic. Well, exactly that. I, I think uh, it is quite intriguing to see Xerneas go in as a lead there. Um, it makes a lot of sense when you're looking at the Evoto and 
I would say maybe the Incineroar or Landorus. So, uh, what I'm acknowledging is the fact that um, Paul must really have a solid game plan in his mind right now. Uh, to mm. even try to think about Xerneas going for it, trying to gain that momentum, because uh, like we had mentioned, FA does have access to a lot of Pokemon, actually, which can cause issues to that Xerneas' setup or in general. You got a lot of wide guard access as well, potential, from the Arachnid attack in Tactic 2, so I am definitely intrigued to see the leads for both these uh, trainers. Maybe Paul's going to start off with that Xerneas, not so much. I mean, obviously you try and get the uh, Geomancy up regardless of mm -hmm. what happens, because, you know, it's a Xerneas on the field that yeah. do. Uh, but it could be played as more of a defensive Geomancy. A, mm. If you don't stop me from Geomancying, I need to Geomancy. But I'm also going to let, you know, whatever else I have on the field yeah. uh, start to set up or start to deal damage. As we are going to be seeing, the Incineroar and Amundus come out from FA's side and the Incineroar Xerneas lead from Paul's side. So you do have fake out pressure on the field from both sides of the trainers. Uh, but then again, that Amundus is uh, definitely what you want to go up against this Xerneas. But you got to be cautious about the Incineroar, though. You have to be cautious about the Incineroar. You also have to be cautious about a possible clear smog on that Amoongus. Um, Sludge Bomb would deal more damage, but being mm -hmm. able to reset stats on Azernius really uh, shuts it down entirely. Yeah, as we're actually going to be seeing the Incineral switch out for the Stack Attacker, they're anticipating that fake out into the slot, and oh my lord, Xerneas with a substitute, not caring for any spore coming up from Amundus' side, absolutely immune to it, and substitute, not a move you commonly see on Xerneas. No, usually Xerneas really appreciates having both access to Moonblast and Dazzling Gleam, because with the power-ups that Geomancy gives you, a Dazzling Gleam uh, will knock out a lot of less bulky Pokémon, despite the fact that it would be dealing spread damage, you know, hitting both Pokémon on uh, on the field. Uh, so by dropping a Dazzling Gleam a substitute, you lose a lot of coverage and you make it so the game maybe finishes up in four, five turns rather than two or three. Uh, but mm -hmm. in this case, especially given what we've seen so far this week, with all the Amoonguses, with all the spores, uh, having Substitute really, really pays off. As we are going to be seeing now that the Xerneas is very free to go for the Geomancy on its side. It has nothing directly threatening it from doing so. It will be, of course, uh, carrying that Power Herb, which does mean, of course, it will be going straight up to plus two of its special attack, defense, and speed all in one turn instead of the regular two-turn wait. Uh, the Incineroar on Paul's side right now will probably be moving immediately after, as we do actually see it do so goes for the parting shot into that stack attacker uh being able to drop its attack now down to minus one but more crucially gabby getting that pivot action going and getting a new pokemon on the field and that new pokemon will be really helpful uh, especially if this stack attacker ends up using trick room since grassy surge plus grassy glide as many of y'all know by now if you've been mm -hmm. watching today uh will be a priority move yeah, it will be indeed, as the Trick Room is now set up from the Stack Attacker. It will be having the advantage when it comes to um, speed tiering, excluding that priority like you did just mention now, the Gabby of the Grassy Glide in the Grass Terrain. The one thing that I really want to see this turn, though, is how bulky these Pokémon are relative to the Xerneas now that it's been able to use Geomancy. Both Amoongus and the Stack Attacka are going to resist thanks to their typing. But if Moonblast is still able to put the Stack Attacka in this instance down within KO range from a Grassy Glide, that's honestly going to be enough and mm -hmm. effectively give Paul the ability to ignore Trick Room and just go on the offensive. Yeah, and um, in, in this scenario, you wouldn't expect the Xerneas with a sub uh, to be facing up against the Stack Attacker and Amundus and be quite well off in this scenario as the fake out from the Rillaboom goes into the Stack Attacker, will be flinching it, and Pollen Puff reveal from the Amundus being able to damage the Rillaboom, but the Xerneas is so free to go ahead and deal so much damage against a Pokemon that you would naturally think is a very good counter against it. If Stack Attacker is allowed to attack this turn, 
you know, Gyro Ball is going to do enough damage to break the sub, would certainly do enough damage to ult knockout, but thanks to that substitute, I will not have that opportunity. I want to learn more about the Amoongus from FA side of the field. We've seen Pollen Puff so far, which could mean that the Amoongus doesn't have access to Sludge Bomb or uh, Clear Smog, which will also make FA's matchup from here on out that much harder. Yeah, definitely, as we're going to be seeing the Rillaboom switch out now for the Incineroar. Uh, if you thought that um, the stack attacker was weakened before, it is weakened even more now, being at minus two of its attack, as the Xerneas is just going to go ahead and slow play this situation. Goes for that Protect. It will be uh, guaranteeing that the Substitute does not fade away this turn, as we do see the Rock Slide coming out from that stack attacker, and you can tell the damage output is not as strong due to those intimidate drops onto incineral which is weak to the rock typing and the amoongus is going to finish off this turn with a side pollen puff nearly making the stack attacker return to 100 of its hp i love this tech especially when amoongus has access to trick room so you can heal uh, the Pokemon on your side of the field prior to your opponent attacking. Uh, thanks to that Pollen Puff, the stack attack is no longer within knockout range from a second Moonblast. Could be from the Flare Blitz on the Incineroar. I think it really depends on how it's been trained. Uh, but still, mm -hmm. giving FA another opportunity to go for Rock Slide for a flinch if he wants to slow things down or go for possibly even a body press on that Amoongus. Um, mm. I think it must be really tempting for him to switch that stack attack out given how much it has been weakened. Mm -hmm. But I don't think whatever Pokemon he has in the back of his party really want to be here under Trick Room. Uh, even with the Xerneas and the Geomancy up, which is also something surprising to me. As FA is going to be switching the stack attacker out now for the Incineral of their own. Being able to get that Intimidate drop onto Paul's Incineral. Whilst the Amoongus is going to be wanting to go for that passive protect kind of play right now. Doesn't want to get affected by it. The fake out though does target down that switch slot. And the Moonblast does try to go ahead and get some chip damage finally off onto the Amoongus. Try to slow it down. But um, a bit of a passive play. But uh, I think... Uh, FA is trying to reposition himself a bit better against Xerneas, but it still has its sub up. It does, and I'm trying to think how exactly is the Xerneas, or how FA is going to break the sub on this Xerneas. Mm. Switching out the uh, stack attacker is the first step. The second step is trying to figure out the best way to get the stack attacker back out onto the field next to something like the Amoongus. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, FA start to take a more defensive stance against this Amoongus, but, you know, a couple parting shots will certainly help as well. Oh, definitely, as it does bypass the substitute, as all sound-based moves do as well. So that pivot action going will be bringing that stack attacker now back onto the field. Don't forget, because of that previous pollen puff, it is very healthy as the incineral goes and targets down the Amoongus. We'll be able to bring it down to just below half of its HP's worth. This Xerneas is not going to be hitting as strong as it would previously, being at plus one, but it will still hit very uh, well, but not actually pick up the KO. It just misses out, actually. So very, very crucial parting shot there. Giving Amoongus the opportunity to switch out on its own volition to get some health back thanks to Regenerator or go for the Rage Powder this turn, take mm. that Xerneas' attack away from the stack attacker and give FA the opportunity to reset the dimensions on Trick Room. And given that the stack attacker has yet to be intimidated this time around, I think that is the play you go for, knowing that once those gyro balls and those body presses are allowed to connect to the opposing side of the field, uh, you're going to uh, give yourself the advantage very quickly. So we're going to be seeing the Amoongus, like you said, Gabby, try to go and get that Regenerator proc to have a bit more HP to deal with by switching out bringing the, the Incineral back in right now. It will be able to drop the damage output of Paul's Incineral, but the Xerneas, still free as you'd like, goes for the Moonblast onto the stack attacker. Doesn't quite deal as much damage as we had previously seen in game one, but it still does a very big chunk. Nevertheless, Paul's Incineral uh, immediately after does go for the parting shot into it, kind of uh, similar to game one, slowly reducing the damage output. 
getting the pivot action going by bringing his own Amoongus in now. And the Amoongus, but there's no trick room! Oh. Oh, wow, no trick room, just wanting to opt to go and finally get rid of that substitute which has proven to be so, so frustrating on FA's side and trying to bring this game back right now. Unfortunately for FA, the Xerneas is uh, fairly safe to go for a second substitute, maybe not this turn, uh, but you know, a turn in the future since it is still at full health, but that is really the first step of finding yourself an opening and going on the offensive. You get rid of the substitute, uh, you try and get the speed control back on your side, and then you move forwards. Fortunately, this stack attack will not be knocked out by a second moon blast, mm -hmm. given that the parting shot did connect with the Xerneas in a prior turn. Uh, so this is, I think this is it. I think this is when you set up that trick room and start targeting the Xerneas fairly aggressively once you have yeah. the speed back on your side. 100% agreed. As we see, Paul is trying to go ahead and reposition, gets the Incineroar in on the field, will have access to fake out the following turn. As we do see the Moonblast now trying to target down that stack attack, but like you said, not able to finish off the KO there due to that previous parting shot. As uh, talking about parting shot, we actually see FA's Incineroar not target down the Xerneas. He actually goes into uh, the Incineroar slot now, and of course, once again, getting that pivot action going. This is a very uh, position-based set right now. We're still in game one, and both of these tra trainers are playing exceptionally well in trying to gain the advantage over one another. And this is the exact same kind of play that we've seen emerge from the metagame, emerging from Players' Cup 4. Uh, it's a revolving door of Pokemon, and the fact that Pokemon like Incineroar, Amoongus, Rillaboom, all do so well when switching around mm -hmm. in in this play style really lends itself to that i mean look at paul's four pokemon they've hardly taken any damage throughout this entire game and i think fa has been doing his best to keep up and try and put that offensive pressure down but uh, paul's just been one step ahead in ensuring that when those hits do land they're not mm -hmm. necessarily going to hit their targets um and i i gotta say i also really love how Paul has been keeping the Xerneas around on the field, especially in conjunction with the Rillaboom's grassy terrain to get that health back after the substitute. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's something that a few people may have been tempted to switch around a bit more, or maybe uh, just not leave the Xerneas out on the field in front of a stack attacker in Trick Room. But as you can see here, um, it, it's just, it, it's keeping it on the field, or well, you know, Ooh. not being afraid of the stack attacker, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. Uh, it's a really strong read from Paul. Oh, wow. Definitely strong as we see both trainers up to go for those switch outs and Cinderella's on FA's side of the field now. Amoongus goes for the protect and uh, Paul's Incineroar will only meet now switched in Incineroar on FA's side. So both trainers opting to go for those hard switches there. And I think both trainers going to be going for yet another switch this turn. Paul not wanting to keep that Incineroar on the field now that it's been intimidated. But here's something that could potentially break up the monotony here. Hmm. If Efe's Incineroar isn't holding safety or a lumberry or something that would allow it to avoid being put to sleep, and the spore is allowed to connect from Paul's side of the field onto it, uh, that could be yet another opening that Paul takes advantage of, knowing that, yes, the Incineroar will still be able to manually switch in and out, uh, but not having access to Parting Shot is going to be, I think, really uh, detrimental for FA, especially given, again, just how slow this game would have been. Yeah, definitely. As uh, like you had mentioned, Gabby, we do see a switch out now from FA's side. The Incineral once again trying to get that pivot going, but actually the stack attackers in now. Self Pollen Puff comes out right now from the Amoon Death. We'll be able to recover so much HPs. Um... And there it is, the item on the stack attacker revealed to be the safety goggles, which will be protecting it from any powder based moves, such as the Spore that did un. Uh, unfortunately not affect the stack attacker. Paul, once again, going for that pivot action, wants to go ahead and bring the Rillaboom in now and try to exert both fake out pressure and potentially damage output if he's maybe anticipating FA to try to make a hard switch here as well. 
I think you have to assume that because that's really what we've seen uh, from both these trainers throughout this game. And the Amoongus and the uh, Stack Attacker can only accomplish so much when they're staring down an opposing Amoongus and an opposing Rillaboom. Yeah. Uh, the Amoongus on FA side of the field could go for a second Pollen Puff if that's something that he decides he needs. It mm. uh, would be nice to get Stack Attacker up to full health. Or there's something else in the back of his party that would appreciate that extra health as well but um just as something uh just another turn where we're to see these trainers uh, try and rotate and try and find some momentum uh, what i'm really curious about is what tra trainers are targeting for their first knockout in this game because uh, you know especially when things are slow for this long there's going to be like that one key turn where a pokemon falls and then everything else oh. kind of falls into place afterwards but that flinch very helpful very helpful indeed the rillaboom didn't flinch it was able to actually knock off the stack attacker's safety goggles this could prove to be quite detrimental on efekiel's side as um he is no longer immune to the amundus spores at least with the stack attacker right now He's not, and that is going to be a key point moving forwards. And I think Paul's, I love how Paul is capitalizing on it immediately by going for the spore. Uh, Paul needs to find himself an opening, and one Pokemon attacking out of two is certainly a great place for that to start. As the Incineroar is going to be switching in right now, further reducing the damage output of this stack attacker. So it is not going to deal much damage at all, even though respectable against the Incineroar there. As um, hoping to get a flinch uh, at the moment, we will not find out. We're waiting to see the Pollen Puff, not quite enough to pick up a KO. And there it is, ladies and gents. The Spore comes out and connects with the stack attacker slot, which means right now, Paul is liking this situation. He's going to be able to try to slow down the momentum on Efekiel's side, but for me, he needs to try to get rid of Efekiel's Amoongus. Exactly, and what better way to do that, especially as we see the trick, the Twisted Dimensions run out, uh, than to go for a attack on to your Amoongus, or your opponent's Amoongus. Um, I like how Paul's taking the turn here to heal, uh, but mm. next turn you know that Flare Blitz is going to try and connect. There it is. So the Protect does come out, Fake out, trying to go ahead and get that flinch action going. And there it is. Paul goes ahead and reveals that he's, uh, that uh, Effetio is not the only one with the Pollen Path access on their Amoongus. It's going to be able to recover so much HP onto the Incineroar whilst Stack Attacker does take its guaranteed sleep turn there. So this is, I think this is the position that Paul's been looking for this entire game. Stack Attacker cannot attack. Even if it does decide to attack, it's been intimidated. Uh, the Amoongus, there's only so much it can do at this point on the opposing side of the field. Could decide to try and heal the Stack Attacker. I think that's probably uh, one of the only things, the only impactful things it can do at this point. Um, but it's an opportunity for Paul to try and find that KO. Uh, otherwise, you may. Pokemon has been knocked out. Yeah, exactly. Oh we... my god. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's quite unbelievable. But this is the kind of uh, gameplay that you would expect from these two players and with these two teams because it's all about positioning, Gavi. They need to try to assert dominance uh, in positioning as best as possible. It's very high caliber, high level play here that you wouldn't see uh, essentially evolve as much in a Dynamax format. So Dynamax format changes things up. There's no longer Dynamax format here. We see the pollen part from the Amoongus going into the Rillaboom slot there. Uh, maybe just barely guaranteeing a two hit KO, but this is very, very close, even though no Pokemon has even gotten KO'd right now. I have to wonder, and I wish I were taking notes in this game, because I, I know we can see how much health that Paul's Pokemon have remaining because we have the benefit of his vantage point, uh, mm -hmm. but I am very curious about where Ethikiel's Pokemon are health-wise, because if we're looking at a situation where all trainers still have all four Pokemon, which uh, honestly might not be as likely given that the Incineroar is staring down the, uh, just kidding, I take it back. Um, <laughs> it, it probably will be all four Pokemon. It's going to come down to which Pokemon have percent HP higher. And at this point in time, I honestly don't know which trainer that is. <laughs> oh. 
Especially when we see both Amunduses up to go for that Pollen Puff. None of them have been KO'd. They really need to get KO'd if one of these trainers wants to try to guarantee any sort of positioning. But at this point, we see Efekio's um, uh, Amundus tried to target down that Rillaboom. Whilst Paul's Amundus is just trying to bring it back up with its HP. I am also, yep, that you're exactly right, Costa. And what I'm curious about here is whether or not these trainers would have uh, played out that turn so that this would be the final turn of the game. But it looks mm. like there's going to be one more opportunity for damage as uh, we get a quick peek at uh, at least what Paul's side of the field looks like. Yeah. as 45 seconds remain until the battle ends it is all about hp percentage right now since all both trainers do have all four pokemon remaining as of this moment in play and not fainted pollen puff here we go a moon is just doing what it's been doing this whole time recovering hp onto the incineral whilst effect heals moon just is trying to do something else uh, use the other effect of pollen puff as as damage rather than Amundus's on Paul's side trying to recover it. <laughs> I, exactly, and unfortunately for Ethekiel, he no longer has the opportunity to heal his own Pokemon as, uh, uh, no, they, they're not stalling out the turn. <laughs> they're not, they're just <laughs> going for it. They're just going for it. <laughs> My lord, you see the Rillaboom just switching straight back in. Oh, this is going to be close. It's trying to guarantee his Pokemon on his side of the field have the most HP. And he's doing that oh so well. As we see Rillaboom just being brought straight back up to the 200. <laughs> and Fekio realizes this, tries to go for a side Pollen Puff as well, saying, oh no, wait, please, I want my Pokemon to have maximum HP. <gasps> oh, and it wakes up. It goes for the Rock Slide. It tries to chip away doesn't deal as much due to all of those intimidate drops there but let's find out who the winner is gabby i i don't know and i honestly am very curious because i don't think i could even tell you at this point um i mean okay so we we see that all four of paul's pokemon are in the green at this point after that mm -hmm. last pollen puff and if memory serves correct there is one pokemon on efekiel's side of the field that should be in the yellow so i yeah. think that would give it to paul but um I, i'm not 100 percent sure because if i were in efekiel's shoes i would have been using those pollen puffs consistently after the three minute warning to try and get my health back up yeah, I mean, you would expect that, but I don't know. Oh my <laughs> lord, this is going to be so close. Not the game one that you would have expected. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, Effectio goes ahead and wins game one down to HP percentage on all four of his Pokemon. Oh my god, I was not expecting that. I, I can't say that enough. That was such a nail biter all the way to the end. And I, I was trying to remember throughout that entire game. I don't think I've literally casted a game where all four Pokemon have been standing by the end of it. Like, I don't think I've ever yeah. encountered that. <laughs> Yeah, 100% oh agree. <laughs> agree. Not what you would expect. So if you came here for the fourth stream match to see Pokemon get KO'd, uh, you had a lot of <laughs> Don't go here. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe check out Pokemon Unite for that kind of content. I think for this game, too, we're going to be looking at another slow, slow game. <laughs> Um, like, both these trainers played that so well up until the end, and I think this goes to show you, I mean, Costa kept saying just high, how high caliber these trainers are. Mm -hmm. Like, to not fall for the bait and to go for those knockouts, like, just yeah. every single time those opportunities came up, uh, it just, I think, shows that not only are these trainers comfortable with the slow game, but I think mm -hmm. we're going to be seeing something very similar in this game, too. Um, I think going into game three, if we get a game three, we'll be seeing something mm -hmm. that has a bit more offense and a bit more like a faster field of play. Uh, yeah. But for now, I, I don't think there's really any adjustments that these trainers can make Pokemon wise. And it's just going to come down to, again, positioning, score and intimidate.
Yeah, and I think in this situation as well, Gabby, um, I want to see which of the two trainers are going to break when, with regards to their patience, because um, having oh. such a stormy affair kind of builds up impatientness as well, and, uh, unless, of course, you are so well-versed, as we have seen both trainers deal so well with that game one and not breaking under the pressure. So there may be that breaking point between one of them where they might either A, bring another different uh, Pokemon, which directly influences inflicts a lot of damage and changes the whole dynamic up or b just try to make some more read based plays and try to target as best as possible as we're going to be seeing effectio go ahead bring the same lead as well as paul does too with the xerneas incineral versus incineral amundus all right i'm gonna make a call and just say that if y'all need any water if y'all need any snacks now would be the time to go grab something quickly from the kitchen exactly. um, i think you have about three minutes at <laughs> least probably more um in, until things start picking up here and the fact that i can even say that goes to show just the stamina that these trainers have exactly um, yeah and i mean costa i i don't know if you've ever been in this this but um for me personally when i'm in these slower games you know it does get tempting to go for those knockouts you mm. do get impatient you know you look at the clock and it's like well you know do i really want to be sitting here for the 20 minutes or can i you know get a little greedy go for a knockout and uh you know save myself some time that's it um, and and the comfort that we've seen so far i i really hope that we see it going on in game two even if it's going to be another long haul because it's just an incredible showcase of mind games it really is, as we see the fake out going into the incineral slot and Pollen Puff actually from Effectio, he's already playing <laughs> the, the time of the game somehow. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but he is trying to regain a bit of that fake out damage there, just in case the Xerneas decided to try to play offensively. But the Xerneas on Paul's side said no, it just wants to go for the very simple play of substitute. It has no reason not to since it guarantees the fake out flinch onto the opponent's incineral. Yeah, the only other thing that uh, Lungus could have done there is go for some chip damage onto Paul's Incineroar. But I, I honestly like the Pollen Puff play because that makes it so much easier for this Incineroar to come back in later on. And our these players are playing to the possibility that there won't yeah. be a single knockout again. Uh, yeah. Keeping your Pokemon at full health when you know there's not much else you can do turn-wise is really important. Oh, exactly. As we are going to be seeing the Xerneas go for the Geomancy, just like it did in Game 1. Um, just hoping to try to go ahead and get all of that damage output as best as possible. But of course, Effectio, we've seen that his Incineral is uh, very, very good with going for Parting Shot. But wait, the Road Shot from Paul's side might prevent this and it is not confirmed if it does yet or not as we see the spore from the emergency side try to target down the incinero on paul's side but safety god was revealed as well a great play from paul shutting down the parting shot shutting down the amoongus and now should have the opportunity to get some amount of damage onto the field or we inevitably see some more pitches up again Oh, there we go. Very good targeting from Paul's side. Goes into the incinerator. Uh -huh. Misses out from picking up a KO, which does put it within the HP range of recovering due to its citrus berry right there. Being able to chomp down on it. Oh, and we see a double up with the flare blitz. Not quite enough to pick up the KO. But at this point, Effectio's incineral cannot go for the parting shots, the sound based moves, should I say, and just tries to opt to go to break the substitute which it is able to successfully do on that Xerneas. And this Xerneas is in the uh, position where it has to, you know, think about this move very carefully. Amoongus could try and spore it, put it to sleep if it doesn't go for a second substitute. Uh, even if it does go for a second substitute, the Flare Blitz from the Incineroar on the opposing side of the field, if it moves first, uh, would be enough to break it and then make mm -hmm. it vulnerable again. I think Paul almost forced to double into this Amoongus, remove it from the field so that none of his Pokemon can be put to sleep uh, but also critically getting that first knockout and i think stopping ethikiel from having access to the slower mode of play we saw dominate in game one 
Ooh, Zefe is actually gonna hard switch his Incineroar out now for the stack attacker, wanting to try to get that damage uh, pressure on against this Xerneas, as the uh, Xerneas did opt to go for the Amundus there and target into it with that Moonblast. Double up, followed up from the Incineroar. Flare Blitz knocked it out. Amoongus is out of game two, ladies and gents, on Effectio's side, and the stack attacker has just been brought in against this terror of a combo on Paul's side. And I think more importantly for all of us here at home, uh, come back. Don't stop getting your snacks. I lied. There really isn't that much time. As Amoongus leaving the field, getting knocked out means that there is no more pollen puff. There's no more regenerator heal. Yeah. And that puts him on a timer. It's not as... Uh, as uh, quick as a timer that some toxic or perish song will establish on the field but paul still has access to those forms of recovery whereas a field does not paul could switch in the rillaboom set up grassy terrain and give him something but that's really not going to compare to what this amoongus can do uh so a very s strong play there from paul realizing that when it comes to the slow switching style of play amoongus is the champion of it uh, and giving um, himself the advantage in that regard as we see a hard double switch from Paul's side, gonna be bringing the Rillaboom and Amoongus in, absolutely throwing away uh, the Xerneas' Geomancy boost there because of the threat that Stack Attacker does have against it. Fake Out comes out from Effect Heal's side, goes into that now uh, Rillaboom slot, and the Trick Room is now set from Effect Heal's side. He's saying, listen, you may have gotten really good pressure there, finally gotten the first Pokemon being KO'd in this best of three but i'm gonna still try to force my pressure as well with the trick room it's interesting to see that switch out from the xerneas but one thing you have to keep in mind is that ethicule's incineroar is no longer or, or now has access to that parting shot once again and can lower the xerneas's special attack Mm -hmm. I think that Paul switching it out here is just him recognizing Stack Attacker can knock it out, Incineroar can make can render the Geomancy boost effectively useless anyways. So it'd be better to just save it for once the Stack Attacker is gone than to put it in danger. Oh, and here comes the Spore Dabby. It goes into the Incineroar slot. Naturally, Amundus is a much slower Pokemon, so it will be moving first under Trick Room conditions. It's able to put it to sleep. Fake out on Stack Attacker, and Paul is just trying to guarantee uh, the sleep pressure of this sporing Amoongus right now. But unfortunately, Amoongus will not be able to spore that Stack Attacker thanks to the safety goggles. So it's mm. great that it was able to connect that with the Incineroar. But now that its job is done, I think that Paul has to look for its other attributes here. Uh, Grass Knot will deal decent damage into that Stack Attacker and certainly put it within knockout range of something else. Incineroar probably will need two hits to be KO'd from here. Uh, but the more of these Pokemon that you uh, remove from the field on Ethikiel's side, uh, the easier it's going to be for Paul to play through this game as we finally get the reveal of the Evel- Here we go, Eveltal is now on the field and in the best of three set, ladies and gents, as the Incineral is going to be switching in now for that Rillaboom. It does not want to get hit by any sort of gyro balls, uh, but no, Stack Attack is going to actually opt to go for the Rock Slide. Still does so much respectable damage at minus one onto this Incineral as the Pollen Puff actually is opted to be chosen and targeted into the Eveltal slot, just wanting to try to get that damage. Uh, from Paul's side trying to prioritize that slot. A interesting reveal of the Eveltal by Ethikiel given that Amoongus is free to go for Spore into that slot. There's only one reason you do a switch like that and that's because you're going to immediately bait your opponent into using the Spore there to give the stack attack a more time to get damage down mm. and to otherwise stop the Amoongus. Exactly as the fake out comes out from Paul's Incineral wants to try to keep on slowing down the pressure on the stack attacker But of course very good switch out there from effect Yo was able to switch out the Evotile Protect it from getting spored by bringing the Incineral which was already asleep into the game Whilst also getting a bit of residual HP recovery from the grass terrain 
and also intimidating Paul's own Incineroar, making it mm. that much harder for it to deal damage to the opposing stack attacker. Uh, a good switch there by Ethikiel, and still trying to keep up with the slow game pace that Paul is setting. Uh, the big question is, though, will Incineroar wake up this turn, and if so, how much damage will it do to the Amoongus? Oh, as we see the rock slide coming out, no flinches at the moment, as the, the grass knot, wow, deals so much damage, thanks to that grass terrain, and the Incineroar does indeed wake up this turn, goes into the Amunda slot, and it picks up the KO. Yes, ladies and gents, that is the second Pokemon that has been KO. Oh. oh my lord, that was so close to being the third as well. I was gonna say, if, uh, if Ithikiel trades the Incineroar for the Amoongus there, um... I think that would have been uh, an unfortunate trade, but knowing that the Twisted Dimensions have returned to normal and seeing that how Incineroar is still within knockout range from mm -hmm. uh, a fake out or really any attack from this Rillaboom, uh, I, I think Paul still does have the advantage there, though it's great that there is no more Among Us on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, this really freaks things up for Ethikiel. Uh Has to make a tough decision here. You know, what is Azernius going to do? my best option to uh, trick room and then to attack it or to go with something else um but uh you know i feel like Ethikiel is sort of getting a chance here now that the amun is gone it's only going to be a couple of turns and uh isn't going to be that large of an opening especially considering that paul still has rillaboom out and has mm -hmm. access to fake out but it's definitely going to be something Oh, as Stack Attacker is going to be switching in for the Evil Tell. Maybe uh, wanting to sacrifice the item slot, expecting a knockoff into the target. But no, Rillaboom just goes for the raw fake out. And uh, Efekiel read that well with the switch. Moonblast comes out from the Xerneas, just wants to guarantee the KO onto the Incineral and is able to do so quite well. Doesn't need to go for Geomancy just yet. Just needs to make sure that uh, Paul has the advantage of... Uh, with remaining Pokemon 3 versus 2 right now as of this moment. And Paul's also welcome to go on the offense now that uh, the two Pokemon remaining, Stack Attacka and Eveltal, um, do have decent defenses. Eveltal can have recovery via Oblivion Wing, um, but will otherwise really struggle against the Pokemon that Paul has remaining. I mm. think Ethikiel has one out here with a Protect on that Eveltal, assuming holding something like an Assault Vest. Uh, and a trick room on the stack attacker to ensure that you move first and then you just double into the Xerneas, knock that out and the Rillaboom and the Incineroar would still follow but it's going to be a bit of an ass to get that trick room up yeah as the Incineroar is now on the field it is doing its job it's got intimidate on the field it wants to try to reduce the damage output of that stack attacker have fake out for the following turn and moonblast comes out there's no need to go for geomance right now just want the damage does so much oh but here comes the signature move of eveltal goes into the Incineroar slot oblivion wing such a good animation there uh, but more importantly it's going to be able to recover that tiny bit of hp back as the stack attacker doesn't opt to go on the offensive it wants to try to set the trick room up and does so also confirmation that the eveltal is holding an assault vest mm. uh, you yeah. know even without the geomancy i thought moonblast it didn't do as much damage as i was expecting so a yeah. uh, great information for paul to have that confirmation uh, i think xerneas is locked out of geomancy moving forwards in this game especially now that trick is back up on the field because power herb is gone geomancy will need two turns in order to fully activate and within those two turns a gyro ball will certainly be able to knock the xerneas out uh, yeah. possibly even a gyro ball plus an oblivion wing if a dql decides to double into the that slot uh so finding an opening here paul certainly still does have the capability uh to mm -hmm. win this game as long as he's careful about switches and those intimidates and you know yeah. where these moon blasts land but i think he'll uh i think doing a great job to hang in here for as long as he he has and still has a chance of winning as long as he's careful 
as the Xerneas is going to be protecting, the Rillaboom switches in right now. Yes, the Gyrobull does try to target down that Xerneas, fails to do so. Oh, this is going to be so much damage, Gabby. Oblivion win comes out super effective onto the Rillaboom, which of course uh, is an Assault Vest variant. But the main crucial thing here is the fact that Ivaldo regains so much HP. Paul, though, on the other hand, does have that fake out pressure right now, right? So can potentially go for a substitute or even a Geomancy. I don't think you geomancy in this position. Substitute's going to be so much more useful since it will give you the opportunity to ignore an additional gyro ball after that fake out. Um, if the, uh, what Paul's doing now in terms of his strategy is what a lot of people like to do when you have both Rillaboom and Incineroar available to you, you mm -hmm. essentially swap them out for each other multiple times, you know, to keep setting those Intimidates onto the stack attack and to keep yep. giving yourself access to fake out every other turn. Yep. Um, and even though the Rillaboom and the Incineroar usually take a lot damage for their struggles, uh, the fact that you're able to get these fake outs in every other turn uh, really opens up the board for the Xerneas to go on the offense. As we're going to be seeing the Xerneas now actually switch out um, into the Incineral, like you mentioned, Gabby, the recycling of the Intimidates is so crucial, especially when going up against an, a stack attacker on the opponent's side of the field. Fake out, though, will be coming out and actually trying to stop the Evotel getting a critical hit as well, just for that extra bit of chip damage uh, from moving. Gyroball targets down the Incineral, and the Incineral survives. It resists. The stack attacker has been intimidated, and that is a very good switch in there for Paul. It also helps that Incineroar is a lot slower than Xernia, so that Gyroball was operating off of a weaker base power as well. Uh, but yes, a very good switch for Paul. Uh, could could possibly even go for one or uh, intimidate turn after this fake out if he decides to do if he decides to go for that. And after yep. being intimidated that much, you have to assume that Gyro Ball is going to be like a three hit knockout, even mm -hmm. though the Xerneas is already. As we do see the fake out. Going into stack attacker, it will not be able to move uh, at this, at least for this turn. Oblivion Wing picks up the KO there, does regain all of the HP that Evotel needs, goes straight back up to 100% right there. As um, the Xerneas will be now coming in uh, against the Evotel and stack attacker, but I think, oh my lord, it's it's so close because both of these players are playing incredibly well. I think Ethikiel has found his way out of a very difficult position. It depends on how many turns of Trick Room are remaining. Mm. I think. I think there is one more turn of Trick Room remaining. Oh. Um, and hypothetically speaking, if Ethikiel is able to uh, have this Eveltal survive this turn and go for an attack next turn, uh, he can target down that Incineroar. Uh, and then Stack Attacka can get the knockout on the Xerneas. Yeah, that that was actually the win con at the end of it. So it, what a crazy turnaround. You know, going back to the start of that game too, I honestly expected Paul to have that momentum on his side given the early knockout on the Amoongus. Yeah. Uh, but the grassy terrain and the Oblivion Wing gave FA access to the recovery that Amoongus was otherwise providing. And as a result, it just felt like Paul wasn't able to match the fact that those two Oblivion Wings was enough to get Eveltal all the way right back up. I mean, it was just a lot of pressure. You wouldn't expect uh, Eveltal to exert so much pressure onto a Xerneas team in that situation as well. But it was like you said, Gabby, the, the fact that you could go ahead and recover HP while still dealing so much damage uh, offensively, both onto Incineroar, Rillaboom, regardless of the fake out pressure that Paul did quite well in cycling around. You got the grass terrain, you got Intimidate, but more importantly, the fake outs constantly. But it just wasn't enough. Just Stack Attacker was always there. The HP that it was at was really good. It was recovering over time from the grass terrain. But the Oblivion win, that absolutely sealed the deal. And Efekio played so well, and he actually brought the Evaltel, which proved to be such a key component to that win. Yeah, and the way that he revealed that Evaltel as well, I if you think back all the way to the start of Game 2, it mm -hmm. was really the Incineroar, the Stack Attacker, and the Amoongus that were switching around, and the Evaltel was safe in the back of Efe's party. Whereas Paul was switching between all four of his Pokemon. 
So by keeping that Evelt all hidden, Moongus and Sakataka to force the Xerneas off the field and to give up the Geomancy boost yeah. uh, made it 100% safe for that Eveltal to take the field when it did, regardless of the fact that it's super weak to those fairy aura fairy boosted moves. And that is, uh, I'm just going to say it for everyone to know, an exceptionally high level set that was played out. Sure, it was 2-0, and Efekia was able to win versus Paul. Um, sure, there was a lot of uh, stally situations and affairs happening in, in game one, but that is literally the peak of strategic positioning and understanding of the board play between both your own side and your opponent's side because you have to constantly try to get every single turn correct try to capitalize as much as you can with the important positionings and what you can force onto your opponent's side where they have to try to uh, interact and try to adapt to what your plays were so honestly it was such a great set to see and i'm very happy that we we're able to cast over it because it just goes to show the level of uh, understanding at a very deep level from both these players and trainers yeah and while i'm not authorized to give out any kind of points or merits on this stream i do want to award paul and fa a gold star for getting the uh four pokemon still remaining on the field timeout because uh, the fact that they were both playing to win that entire yep. game and that was still what ended up happening is yep. something that I don't think I'll see again for a very long time. <laughs> no, I agree. I mean, that is, you got to be there to experience it. It's one of these sets <laughs> that you just, yeah. you, you just have to be. That's how it is. But um, yeah. yeah, of course, that does mean, ladies and gents, that um, Argentina is going to be able to currently, based on the website, uh, progress versus Ecuador at the moment, two to one. They have the advantage. But of course, these, the match between these two countries is far from over. Uh, these matches will be updated over time, both today and today tomorrow where the final deadline is tomorrow all matches will be guaranteed to be played so please go ahead check out victory roads website at worldcupvgc.com uh, you'll have all the information you need for this week and following weeks i myself have been costa and gabby i mean i've had a lot of fun today it's been great i hope you have too gabby i think you have as well. <laughs> you definitely have it's been really good um but we're gonna leave it there please tune in tomorrow same time we're gonna be casting again and you'll be able to check victory roads twitter for the schedule which matches are gonna be played but a lot of love we appreciate you and have yourselves a very lovely pleasant saturday night thank you